Hello, my name is Beth Dixon and I am the Math Lab Coordinator and work in MBSS 222 on the Morristown campus. It is my job to help students with their math courses here at Walter State. And as part of that, I'm doing these podcasts to help supplement your teacher's lectures. Again, they're not meant to replace your, your lecture or your class uh, room time, but to help show you how to do some specific problems. Um, this particular podcast is one on proportions and help to do some of the examples um, and homework problems from that section. Um, what is a proportion? Just as a, a quick review, and again, I'm not giving the full lecture on proportions. Uh, you really do need to have been to class um, for that. A proportion happens when we set two ratios equal to each other. And so when we have two ratios equal to each other, we have a proportion. And one of the things that your homework will ask you to do is to determine if a statement is a proportion. And again, it's a proportion if the two values are equal. Well, since we're going to set our ratios up as fractions in this section, um, because we're doing the math to them, one of the tools that we'll use is the fact that the cross products of fractions will of equal fractions will be equal. And in this case, that means that we're simply going to make a cross, multiply the numbers, and if those values are the same, then the proportion is the same. So we're going to multiply 3 times 35 and 5 times 21 and see if we get the same value. Now, I'm not going to try to multiply that in my head. I don't expect you to multiply that in your head. So you're going to take 3 times 35 and you get 105. And 5 times 21 and lo and behold we get 105. And since the cross products are the same, then yes, this statement is a proportion. Now, that statement as a proportion was strictly ratio numbers without any values. Sometimes we'll be given those ratios with values. 140 skeins of yarn to make 56 projects completed. And is that equivalent or equal to 96 skeins of yard, yarns to complete 38 projects completed? And we want to know if this is a proportion, if these are proportional. And again, we're going to use that cross product. We're going to multiply 140 times 38. And since we have a lot of words here, I'm going to rewrite those numbers that are multiplied down below it. And 56 times 96. Okay, and again, these are going to be huge numbers. I'm not expecting you to multiply that out. So I get 5320 when I multiply 140 times 38. And when I multiply 56 times 96, I get 5,376. So these two are not equivalent. So this is not a proportion. And in this case, if it takes 140 skeins of yarn to make 56 projects, and somebody else takes 96 yarns to make 38 projects, then either they're making different projects or they're not uh, crocheting at the same rate or in the same size, which with crocheting or knitting you can do that. So they're not proportional. Let's look at a couple more examples of places where we can use proportions then to solve some application problems. And I tried to pick some examples that would be interesting to students uh, without getting too technical or um, 
to in detail. So in doing that, uh, we may have left out some reality checks, but just bear with us. We are trying to do the proportion part of the math and not uh, the other parts. And again, I'm just doing some specific examples in this. I did not cover all of the details of the uh, of this, I just picked out some specific things that I thought students would need to see a couple of more examples of for this section. If a 150 pound adult can have 25 milligrams of a certain medicine, how much can be prescribed for a 250 pound adult? Well, as we read these proportions, remember, and again, You've had the lecture and you know how to do some of the other work that I'm leaving out. I wanted to get to how to read the word problems. As you read the word problems, you're going to get to this first number here, and it's a 150 pound adult. So I'm going to put it into one of my fractions because I want to write two ratios equal to each other. So I have a 150 pound adult can have 25 milligrams of medicine. So I have a ratio of 150 pounds to 25 milligrams of medicine. Then I'm going to keep reading. I've used this number, I've used this number. How much can be prescribed for a 250 pound adult? Well, because my ratios have to be equal, on top over here needs to be pounds and over here needs to be milligrams. What number do I have here is 250 pounds. So that 250 needs to go here. And how much can be prescribed is what I'm looking for. So that's going to be my X or my unknown. Now, when I'm solving that then, I've got 150 over 25 equals 250 over X. And now I have... Um, a proportion and I can use that cross product being equal to solve it. I can multiply these two and these two. Well x times 150 is 150 x and I always find the x first. I look at my four places and find my x and multiply it by its opposite and write it down and then the equals because we like our x on the left hand side. We're just used to seeing it there. We're more comfortable with it there so I always find it and write it on the left. Doesn't matter where it is. Now these are not going to be as a fraction down here. It's going to be as an equal because we're using the fact that those cross products are equal. So we're setting them up as an equality, as an equal. We're going to write them one thing equal to the other. This equal to whatever 25 times 250 is. And again, I'm not going to do that in my head. <clears throat> So I've got 6250. Then to solve, I'm going to divide both sides by 150 to get the x by itself. So I get 41.667. And we've got to remember that my x is milligrams. So how much medicine can it, they be prescribed? Well, approximately 41.7 milligrams. Okay, let's look at our second example down here. And it says it takes 20 pounds of potatoes to make mashed potatoes for 50 people. How many pounds of potatoes do you need to feed 85 people? Now, as I look at this problem, I want to stop and think and read it through first. Notice I always read through the problem first. And then I go to go back and say, well, I've got a ratio problem. How do I know that? Because I have 20 pounds to 50, for 50 people. Another word for four is two. And it says, how many pounds of potatoes do I need to feed for 85 people? So 
So I've got 20 pounds of potato, that's the first number, to make mashed potatoes for 50 people. And so that's going to mean I need pounds over people. How many pounds of potatoes do I need to feed 85 people? Well, this is people, so the 85 is going to go on the bottom. Notice how I write the units in first and then plug that third number where it belongs. The, you know, your ratio of how do the two numbers relate? Well, the first two numbers are relating to each other. Not because of their first two numbers, by the way, but because that sentence tells me that it takes 20 pounds for 40, 50 people. You don't caution you there. Just because they're the first two numbers does not mean they always go here. It's because they relate to each other in that first sentence. When we write problems concisely, they're often the first two numbers. But we don't always write things concisely, so be careful. Read carefully. But once we've done that, I know that pounds go here and people go here. I don't know what goes over here until I think about what I'm missing and what I have. What I have is 85 people, so I know it goes on the bottom, and what I'm missing is the pounds, so it gets an X. And so then that gives me 20 over 50 equals X over 85. And then I'm going to use again the fact that my cross products must be equal. I find my x first. x times 50 is 50x. Then I multiply my other two numbers. 20 times 85 is 1700. Divide by 50. And x equals 34. Now, x is what? x is pounds. So I know I need 34 pounds of potatoes. And I hope this helps you solve some application problems. And again, I didn't cover everything in this section. I was just trying to do a couple of application problems. If you need some additional help with this section, be sure to come by and see us in room 222.